Seth McFarland grew up on his family's ranch in Carmen Creek, near Salmon, Idaho. In 2012, he graduated from the University of Idaho with a range management degree. McFarland was eager to apply what he learned from college towards managing the ranch. PSP6, Idaho fescue, blue bunch, and litter. So the top hit was a blue bunch, top canopy, and the soil surface was a basal hit on Idaho fescue. He has set up more than 10 range monitoring transects on their private land and nearby BLM and Forest Service grazing allotments. Astragalus and litter. Today, McFarlane is recording information from a line point intercept monitoring transect. What I do is I collect cover data right at every four feet along this 200 foot transect. The cover data will help determine long-term trend and I will repeat this about once every three to five years. At the monitoring points, McFarland is finding native blue bunch wheatgrass, Idaho fescue, wildflowers, and sagebrush. His dad found a grouse nest under a sagebrush a few feet away. The line point intercept is essentially in an inventory. So this method is just a rapid, quick assessment of what's here and it is useful for trend over time. Range monitoring is becoming more important as ranchers realize the need to track ecological conditions on private and public rangelands. Rancher Tom McFarland is happy to see his son return from college with the knowledge of how to monitor rangelands with scientific integrity. We knew we'd needed it. We'd actually visited when you're always gonna stick the camera in your saddlebag and take those pictures and somehow you seem to not do that. Down a little. Right there. Yep. He's the tool, he's the asset that we needed to get that done. If we're going to keep ourselves on the land, we have to prove that we're sustainably managing that natural resource. We need to show that we can manage it in such a fashion that ecologically it's sound for everything else out there, the wildlife, the fish, all those other critters. And I think the monitoring is going to give us the basis, the real, the real tool to be able to do that and show that we are good stewards of the land. This year, the University of Idaho Rangeland Center, the Idaho Cattle Association, and the Idaho Rangeland Resource Commission sponsored range monitoring workshops so ranchers can learn the proper techniques for tracking range conditions. In a workshop in McCall, ranchers learned how to set up photo monitoring points in riparian and upland areas. Amanda Gearhart, the workshop leader, pointed out in a classroom session that photo monitoring is easy to set up and the photos can be added to range condition data kept by federal agencies. Plus, photos will complement other monitoring data and the pictures tell a story about the land over time. And monitoring photos can be telling when grazing cases go to court. In the Fish Creek Meadows area, ranchers broke into teams to set up photo monitoring points in a riparian area. Every group is going to need to get a camera and a photo board. The first question our group had was how do you decide where to locate the photo monitoring point? Right? What's going to show change out here? What are you going to try and influence with your management out here? For example, maybe on a creek if our goal is to stream temperature is an issue, Maybe we want to try to affect the shade, so we're going to try to shoot to get more willows on it. So maybe there's two goals here, that we want to see what our cows are eating, and we want to see what temperature the stream is, so we need to take two photos. Okay. Awesome, good job. Pam Schwenkfelder takes a photo okay. looking downstream and upstream from the photo point in the Fish okay. Creek Meadow. There's that one. The whiteboard indicates the location and the date. The GPS coordinates of the monitoring location are logged for future reference. This can be done with a smartphone or a GPS unit, and the location should be marked as well. Experts recommend that ranchers should take notes on plant species, weather conditions, and other helpful information to supplement the photo data. Write the main stuff down. Uh, somebody pointed out if you did get a stream bank, you probably would want to say, was it bare? Did it seem like it was eroding? Was it getting more stable? Next, the group heads up the hill to set up a monitoring point on an upland site. 
Rancher Jason Anderson sets up the whiteboard information with the date and location. Holly Hampton points out that it's helpful to include natural landmarks in the photos. As far as like the make, photo make, point make, itself, yeah. we're probably yeah, going to want to do it because yeah. if you do it straight up, all you're going to see if you have to find it again in 10 years, all you're going to see is those trees right there. No like, well, landmark. Pam reconfigures her position and gets the shot. Rancher said the tips on photo monitoring were helpful. I think it's uh, pretty awesome to monitor and you know it's important not only for me in my experience but it would have been nice to have my grandfather or my dad do it. Yeah I learned a lot. It's kind of like a journal or history for, for me and my management and even for future generations. Cambridge rancher Royce Schwinkbelder says it's important to monitor conditions on private land as well. We have a lot of uh, sagebrush and sage grouse habitat. Uh, we're trying to monitor range health there because we want to know that we're not uh, degrading a sage grouse habitat by our, our range management. We spring graze a lot of that ground and uh, we graze it to uh, a standard that we have in our range uh, uh, plan and we want to make sure that we're staying on track with that. Back at the McFarland Ranch, Seth takes photo points on their private land along Carmen Creek. We are managing this riparian area primarily for wildlife habitat and for forage for our livestock secondary. The purpose of my photo monitoring here on our private land is to document the change on uh, the stream bank. This is a relatively recent change. The stream used to be over here about 200 feet to my left and uh, I want to document how is the stream channel changing in conjunction with a fall grazing regime. Specifically, what species are coming in? Are we getting the sedges and rushes? Are the, the woody structure, the willows, the alder, the cottonwoods, are they coming and establishing along the bank to hold and stabilize the bank? And then also, I'm trying to capture what's happening within the meadow. Seth hopes that range monitoring on private and public lands will ensure a long future for his family. So what I'm trying to do uh, with monitoring is show that we can sustainably graze these federal rangelands. In turn, also helps with our local economy by keeping these grazing operations sustainable. And it also shows that we can maintain or hopefully keep go progressing toward overall ecological health. Tom McFarland, meanwhile, says it's great to have a son who's so interested in range management. Seth always had a very intense interest in the land and the animals and the plants. And when the other kids were doing sports, he just wanted to go to the hills and, and watch the wildlife and watch the, 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 the things out in the greater outdoors. And, and that's just over time that's grown. He loved to go hunt antlers, and when he'd go out in the hills for years, he kept diaries, big diaries of weather events and different things that were happening on the landscape, and that's really helped him. Tom McFarlane is a proud papa. Intensely proud, yeah, it's a good thing. Yeah, he's fortunate to have that passion. Not, not all kids have it. For more information about range monitoring and future workshops, contact the University of Idaho Rangeland Center.